this vlog is going to be about AI machine learning and how you can learn more on your own. And I just want to like put a disclaimer here that I am not really an advocate for not going to university and just doing the whole self teaching thing. I guess that a lot of people would disagree on that point because maybe you know someone that made it as a data scientist and did not go to university and that's totally fine and there's always people doing that but I just don't want to like proclaim that in a YouTube video and then make maybe life hard for somebody. Most data science positions especially in US and in Germany you either need to have done a master or a PhD uh, where you build machine learning models. Saying like how to be a data scientist in four months on online courses, like yes you can be that but it might be hard and you might actually be limited to the positions you can apply to and maybe even the places in the world where you can apply to. This is maybe more for people that are doing like an engineering degree or computer science degree. Maybe even for you guys that do economic and want to just, you know, have more on your CV. But I wouldn't say that this is enough to go through a screening, even though it might be enough to actually do the job. First, first, programming language. With my full heart say Python, more packages and libraries are being built for Python in the machine learning world. I've been scouting a little bit on the job market now and most people actually ask about Python. There's tons of courses on Udemy or I'm probably gonna put some other uh, platforms here that you can check out for free courses. Where my second tip is Kaggle.com has a site, like if you go to Kaggle.com on the website on the top, you will see something called courses. There you will have introductory to mid-level course for Python in very, very broad machine learning aspects. It's all about data cleaning to like search playing around with TensorFlow. There's a lot, a lot of different small courses. My tip is actually to go through every single one of them, basically because if you're a newbie, you might not exactly know which direction you want to go as a data scientist. And yes, there are a lot of different directions. And the second thing is that if you've already done an introductory course and done some coding, when you will need it, it will be much easier for you to know what is possible and it will be so much easier to Google what do you need. And then what I think is really good to go through is the free Stanford courses on YouTube. So YouTube, not YouTube, but Stanford has recorded a lot of lectures from one of, I think, the most popular course there, Convolution Neural Networks for Images, and another one which is Natural Language Processing with Deep Learning. They go through some theory, they go through concepts, known algorithms that, you know, one should know <laughs> in the business. You will have a very good basis because the Calgary course is more about simpler machine learning models and also a lot about data cleaning, whilst the Stanford courses are more about deep learning and image processing and natural language processing. I honestly believe that that will give you a very good like ground to stand on because if you have that, you will one, be able to read papers better and like understand what is happening in the data science world because you will have read a lot of different vocabularies that are basically connected to the machine learning data science world. If you then want to deep dive a little bit more, I would say that all the tips I gave now are a little bit superficial in the way that you would be able to use TensorFlow and apply a lot of different methods without knowing exactly how every single algorithm works. So there's actually one book I would recommend when it comes to the data cleaning and the more simpler machine learning models, even a little bit about neural networks, but it's this data um, mining book that I will put on the screen. That one I think goes through everything very clearly. It has exercises after each chapter 
and it also has solutions to those so it might be good to you know do a like PCA with your hands instead of just like using it with TensorFlow and also that will help you in data science interviews because they might ask you you know what is a principal component analysis and if you just say like yeah it reduces the dimensions it might sound a little bit superficial but if you actually start to explain it more deeply how you actually proceed with, with making it that will give you more credits oh god i need to change my hand again i think like vlogging is a great arm exercise okay so when you start doing your own models in tensorflow you will soon realize like oh i can't just copy and paste what i've done before with tensorflow in another project because i have totally different data and i want to do like maybe something totally different then you actually need a good knowledge in tensorflow pytorch and tensorflow are the most used libraries i would say at least the ones i've mostly been in contact with so i think it's good to know at least one of them really well i just like happened to use tensorflow because the first company i'd worked with had a co collaboration with google and i have one book tip there it actually goes through most things in tensorflow it also has coding examples of everything it has its own git repository so i think it's really good The best data scientists are not the ones that read the most books, it's the ones that have worked with most data sets. Because every single data set is different and will be challenging in a different way. Even though it doesn't seem like it, just looking from above, like images are images and, you know, I don't know, healthcare data is healthcare data. But in reality, all the different formats, sources and tasks and goals will make it challenging so do projects and here Kaggle is really good because it has a lot of data sets and it has a task you don't have to like compete until you are on an amazing position on the score board the most important thing is that you work with as many data sets as possible one thing I actually didn't mention is SQL uh, as a programming language but that's definitely something you should look over if you don't already know it. So yeah, now you will have a lot to do when it comes to data mining, data cleaning, visualization of the data, because that's also important too. If you have a client, you want to like showcase the data in some way, even though it's like has a lot of different dimensions. So that's also something which is in the Kaggle courses that you will be able to do. If you have any questions, just comment here below otherwise i just want to like say a big thank you if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i'll upload new videos where you'll walk with me and i talk about random topics <laughs>